Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Thiel. I'm president of Doctors Research, Inc., the United States distributor for Food Research International food brand uh, vitamin and mineral supplements. Today, this is part four of our series on natural versus synthetic vitamins, and I'm going to finish the, off with the B vitamins I hadn't talked about in the prior series, as well as uh, uh, vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin E. Most people, when they take vitamins, they think they're getting foods. They think that the vitamins they're getting are natural, but they do not realize that because governments such as the United States don't have a standard for natural, that really, just because something says it's natural on the label doesn't mean that, it's, that it is. Furthermore, if your patients come into your office and they have a brand of vitamins and it says something like, no yeast, that's not a good thing because a lot of B vitamins, really the only way to get them from foods is to get them through yeast. So that should throw a warning signal to everybody if it says no yeast on a product because it means, okay, it's probably a synthetic isolate. Furthermore, and I realize some people are concerned about yeast infections, the type of yeast in food vitamins, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, does not cause yeast infection, does not make yeast infections worse. Now, I know some people, when they read the book by Dr. Crook called The Yeast Connection years ago, thought that because he said that, that was true. Well, actually, when he wrote the third or fourth edition of his book, he changed, changed that and said, no, that's not the case. And the German monograph E, by the way, said that actually uh, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, may, nutritional yeast, actually help fight it because it helps support the immune system. So I want to start off with that. And the reason I'm saying that is because the next vitamin I want to talk about is vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 in foods are basically mixed cobalamins. Yet in most supplements, it's something called cyanocobalamin. Huh? Right. Cobalamin, cobalamin with cyanide attached to it to, for stabilization. That's not the way it exists in food. So if you see cyanocobalamin on a label of a product, you know you're not dealing with a food, you're dealing with a USP isolate synthetic. Vitamin C. Well, as we talk about the B vitamins for half a second, you'll also see other things such as choline and nostril and all those kinds of things out there. Uh, uh, choline bitartrate, which is commonly used in a lot of nutritional supplements, is also not a food. So if you see that on the label, you know it's not a you know it's not a food. The uh, uh, and biotin, biotin, some of the synthetic forms are only absorbed like one percent as well as the real thing, which is what's in food vitamins. Now some people will say, aha. What's the equivalency between natural vitamins and synthetic vitamins? Can't I take like five times as much of a synthetic and it's just as good as one in food? No, not quite. Not only are there risks involved with synthetic vitamins such as folic acid, which we mentioned in the, the previous part, but they don't have all the same functions. It's kind of like telling somebody, here's the deal. You want to build a computer? We're going to give you 85% of the parts that you need, but they're going to be big. They're going to be bigger than normal parts. Or we'll give you all the 100% of the parts that you need, and they'll be normal size. Well, the bigger one might look impressive, but it won't work. It won't work the same. It'll have some of the function of the other computer, but probably lots of problems if it's missing pieces. And that's the same thing with foods. People are kidding themselves if they think they're getting all the nutrients they need from isolated USP vitamins, which is in most supplements. Ascorbic acid, if you see that on a label, that's what most companies use for their vitamin C. It's not a food, it's an isolate. It's made by, from uh, uh, corn sugar processed with a uh, nail polish remover. Well, acetone, which is an ingredient in nail polish remover. It does not have uh, significant antioxidant effects in human beings, only in test tubes, whereas food vitamins tend to get the uh, vitamin C from acerola cherry. Or, uh, or oranges, for example, this particular multiple vitamin, which I take, my wife takes, my children take, employees take, etc., uh, contains vitamin C from both uh, acerola cherry, which is the most nutrient, vitamin C nutrient dense food out there, as well as uh, oranges. And, by the way, ascorbic acid, which is a crystalline isolate, does not exist that way in any food. I mentioned this brochure before, and again, to take a look at it, you'll notice that. USP vitamins are crystalline, whereas food vitamins are not, because they're not structurally the same. In addition, they just don't have the same functions in the body. On the antioxidant tape, I mentioned that uh, ascorbic acid has positive ORP, oxidative reductive potential, but that food vitamin C has negative. Well, the negative ORP is what attracts and removes toxins from the body, 
And this is one of the reasons why if people are interested in antioxidant production, I recommend food vitamins. Vitamin D. The first form of vitamin D that was put in, uh, developed the USP form D1, was supposed to help prevent rickets. Guess what? It didn't have anti-rickets effect, but they put it in, in milk for a while anyway. Then they said, ah, maybe we should try vitamin D. D2, we never problems with that one. Then he went to vitamin D3 and then D4. Essentially, the, the body makes a vitamin D3 precursor and basically forms similar to that is what's found in foods and that's what's, for example, in the multiple vitamin that I mentioned before. Vitamin E. A lot of people like to take vitamin E. Vitamin E in foods has antioxidant effects. The isolated forms often don't. The synthetic forms aren't retained as well. The acetate forms, by the way, are made out of petroleum esters. They're not food. People should not take them. Even according to the mainstream, such as Modern Nutrition and Health and Disease, a prior addition to that, it said that vitamin E was the exception to the paradigm that natural vitamins are superior to synthetic ones. Well, as I've been saying in this uh, series, it's not just vitamin E. All nutrients, in my opinion, are better for maintaining proper health if they're food or in foods. The isolates, while they may have temporary clinical benefits, are not optimal in the long run. And if people want to improve their health, they want to take a multiple vitamin to help fill in nutritional gaps. And I, I, don't, and I, I take the multiple vitamin and vitamin minerals I mentioned before, so I obviously believe I need to do that. But they should take one made out of food, not one that isn't or one that's just isolated. Vitamin K. There's various forms of vitamin K, but vitamin K in plants is a form that I recommend, and that's the same form that would be in the multiple vitamin, the vitamin mineral that I mentioned earlier. For more technical information on these supplements, you can go to uh, our food versus non-food vitamins. You can go to doctorsresearch.com. But one other point I'd like to mention, some of your patients might come to your office with so-called food-based vitamins. Be cautious about that. Explain to them that food-based, unfortunately, doesn't mean that the vitamins come from food, but that the supplement contains some food as a base, and then synthetic vitamins were sprayed on it. Unless the label clearly says 100% food, and none of the chemical forms shown, none of the forms shown on here are USP isolated forms, it's not a food. And for your patients to build optimal health, they should take vitamins in foods, in the far form found in foods, and none of the synthetic forms. And for doctors who don't have this particular brochure, I would recommend that you get this for your patients. This particular one lists the chemical forms of food versus non-food vitamins, explains the sources of food versus non-food vitamins, and basically, when your patients read this, they'll understand why food vitamins are superior, and technically how they can tell the difference between food and non-food vitamins. And again, for more technical information on the advantages of food versus non-food vitamins, again, I would recommend you go to our website, www.doctorsresearch.com.